Good evening, everybody. Good morning, good day, whatever time you're listening to this podcast. If you're listening to it at 9 on Sundays or at 10, Friday nights at 10 p.m., only on Palma One Radio. Um, You can listen to my podcast every Friday night at 10 p.m. with repeat on Sundays at 9. I am a night owl, as you all know. And I um, told you guys about this podcast and my goal with this podcast, which has been to always bring honesty and faith and inspiration and um, I have been so blessed with the opportunity to come back to Pama and bring something new and exciting something that's not really been done on um on this platform, which is um, amazing to be back. And all you listeners out there, thank you for downloading the app. Thank you for following the link. I know it's confusing. I know it can be difficult, but I try my best each and every week to make it as easy for you guys as possible by just sending a link and letting you guys know it's on live. So, um, as you guys know, I was inspired to do this podcast um, by a good friend of mine. You guys all know Rosie's story that I've told here briefly. Um, She was my inspiration for this podcast, and she is a living, breathing, walking, talking, functioning miracle and we are women of faith we are women of um, immense belief in our God immense belief in um, the fact that she is a walking talking breathing miracle and it just so happens that today on this beautiful day, it is Rosie's birthday. It is Rosie's birthday, you guys, and I can't tell you how happy I am to have my guest here tonight on Faith Ignited. By the way, you're listening to Faith Ignited on Palma One Radio, and I have an amazing guest tonight, someone that I never knew if she would be willing or ready or able to talk about this experience because it has been so fresh. Um, But we have here tonight, everybody, please welcome Rosie's only sister, only sibling, Rosie's sister, Araceli Reyes. She lives in... Um, San Jose, California, um, Campbell, California area. Um, she is a Bay Area girl born and raised in San Jose. She lost her mom um, a few years back. And we actually um, got to know each other through the loss of her mom in a very special way that we'll talk about a different time. But today we're gonna talk about Rosie. So Araceli, are you there, sweet girl? I am, thank you for having me, Nancy. Oh my God, thank you for being here, Araceli. Uh, By the way, I call her A, so if you hear me say A once in a while, (laughs) or sis, we call each other sis, A, whatever. Um, But, Thank you for being here tonight, my sister. Thank you for mustering up the courage and the ability to talk about something 
with such a horrific beginning that had such a beautiful sort of ending. Yeah. Um, and if you would like to share a little bit about what happened on July 3rd for you, um, and we can start with just that night and when you received the phone call. Yeah, sure. She, um, I got a phone call on 4th of July night, actually, and right. um, saying to go to the hospital because I needed to go pick up her daughters mm. that they had been in a, you know, a bad car accident. So, of course, <laughs> driving to the hospital, which is only not even a mile away, seemed mm. eternal. Right. And, uh, and upon getting there, um, I asked to see my sister and my brother-in-law, and they told me that... I couldn't. Mm. Um, but when they had called me, I asked about, you know, Rosie and, and her husband. And they said they couldn't give me any, any information. So, hence why it seemed eternal, the right. drive over right. there. Right, right. Um, right. You once were I the got only there, person, right? That, that you, I was the only person. Right, right. Yeah, you I was the only person. You guys are sisters. And, and yeah. that's it. That's all that's left. That's all that's left, yeah. Because right, mom passed four years ago dad passed two years ago um you guys are so orphaned. it's just us two right. yeah right um so upon getting there they told me i couldn't see her mm. and they told me you know that she was that it was a, a bad bad accident mm. i asked about my brother-in-law and he was at a different hospital so knowing that it was already late it was by that point, maybe, you know, 1130 or something, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I brought the girls over to my place and we, we tried to sleep. We were in the accident, correct? We were in the accident, they right. Were they the were the also in the accident. With mom. Yeah, they were rear-ended and Rosie was ejected from the vehicle. <sighs> and everybody else was okay except her. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh. So, um... The next day we went, you know, obviously didn't sleep, um, right, right. went to the hospital and found out where my brother-in-law was at and he was released with a laceration on his head. Okay. His brother had a dislocated shoulder. Okay. Um, my brother-in-law's best friend was fine, not a bruise or anything. Mm, amen. Um, the girls, her daughters, um, were okay, just some whiplash and bruising. What are their ages? And I, um, Noelia is 18 now. Okay. She was 17 at the time. Okay. Uh, Camila was 12, now 13. Wow. So those are babies. Yeah. Those are babies. Yeah, those are big ages, or, yeah. you know, where yeah. it can really affect them. Yes. Um, prior to the accident, though, um, I know my Rosie was uh, really feeling down yeah. and really in a funk with, you know, mom's for your yes. passing anniversary yes. my dad's passing anniversary because yes. both of our parents passed away in July yes. and the accident happened in July and let's be realistic and let's be real with our audience because this happens in a lot of families there was a little bit of conflict between sisters it happens oh yeah and there happened to be um not really conflict, but just butting of heads. We were different. Yeah, yeah. They're, you, they're very different from one another. Araceli is more like me, outspoken, and and uh, and she she's you know we can be loud and we're outspoken, but Rosie's the calm, quiet, docile one, gentle, gentle. Yeah. So <laughs> if you can imagine this sister who is now getting this phone call from a hospital that her nieces. Her sister and her brother-in-law could all be taken away from her in that split second. It could have been a fatality accident because if you see or hear about the accident, you would think everyone in that those cars passed away. Am I wrong? And and you know, no, you're right. And the um, highway patrol officer did tell my brother-in-law that if had they not been in a suburban. Mm. If they would have been in a smaller vehicle than a Suburban, all of them would have died. Yes. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. Yeah. Because of the way they were hit and how they were hit by two different vehicles, maybe even more. Who knows? 
but um, yeah, so the next day you, you try to gather up whatever like you can put on to wear because you're exhausted. And you also are have a very important job that you have patients that rely on you. So you also had to notify your place of employment yeah, my work. that, mm-hmm. listen, I'm like, everything falls to back. the wayside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but my first priority was to make sure the girls were okay, physically. Right. So, you know, the next day I did take them to the doctor to get checked out, and they were okay. Um, Amen. The Noelia, the oldest one, ended up, with time, um, she fell into a really deep depression. Mm. So I started her um, with therapy, mm. and she saw a psychologist, and they gave her anxiety medication mm. and medication for PTSD because yes. she had told me, Nina, I thought my mom was dead. Yes, yes. Because they that... saw Rosie. Oh, they saw. They saw Rosie on the freeway. Mm. On the they pavement. They saw her. On the pavement. On the pavement. In some wild, like, bush. like In a fetal position on just the concrete on, on the road. Can you imagine, you guys out there, can you just imagine what that's like for a 12 and 18-year-old? At 50, I could not see that. So yeah, that was really hard. PTSD and, you know, with the little one, she, she's, she's not showing signs yet, but maybe down the line... She's going mm-hmm. to have PTSD, right? Right, yeah. And so you you were the advocate at that point for everyone. Right, and, and including my sister, because my brother-in-law, you know, he just couldn't handle it. Mm-mm. So um, when we were able to see her, um, he said, I'm sorry, I just can't. Mm. He's like, I... I I will come in the morning and say hello and in the evening and I'll say good night but I, I can't be in here oh, he's like you're the strong one can you can you do this and I said of course you not, don't have to ask me not knowing how severe it actually was right right till like the second day they told us that she had 80% chance of making it so what is that 15% chance of survival of surviving, yeah, twenty percent chance 20% of survival. Twenty percent chance of survival, you guys. And if she survives, we don't even know she'll be able to walk or speak or remember or eat on our own or remember anything right. or anybody. And that's what uh, they were telling you guys, right? The family. They were telling us that, yeah. Imagine, imagine the anxiety, just that alone. And so, can you talk a little bit about what Rosie's injuries were? Uh, Rosie had uh, brain trauma to both the left side and right side of the brain. Mm. She had fractured ribs. Mm. She had a fractured hip. Mm. She had a big laceration on her left ankle that was deep to the bone. Mm. Um, She had a deep laceration on her left hip because when she was ejected and landed, she landed on her left side. Mm. So you can imagine um, it was so deep that a surgical swab q-tip the whole thing fit inside of it oh my god oh, she had um fluid in her brain oh my god um they couldn't do surgery because of the fact of the brain trauma on both sides of the brain oh, dear god. um it was looking bleak you couldn't touch her you couldn't touch her even oh, yeah. she still had blood from the accident yes Yes. On her face, coming out of her ears and her nose, you could not touch her because of the fluid that was in her brain. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And she was starting to turn blue in some areas. And, yeah, she was not looking good at all. And prior to the accident, you know, July is a very tough month. Yes, talk about why. And I always, well, you know, the passing of my mom and my dad right. are both in July, July, and Rosie was already struggling with right. that. Right, and it was only prior the 4th to the of July. So you and it was imagine. only the 4th. Yeah. So both of our anxiety, once July starts to come, right. we, we get in a little, you know, a little sad. Yeah, you know? of course. And of course. it came to my mind, I want to say days before the accident, what if something happened bad to my sister? Mm. 
I wouldn't be able to handle it because she is my only immediate family member left. Mm. So now the 4th of July, this accident happens and I'm mm. like, oh my God. Don't take my sister. Don't take my sister. Don't take my sister. And if I could have switched places with her, I would have done it in a heartbeat. And you know, I was just about to say, you guys, just to give you a visual, I um, went to see Rosie a few weeks later and um, my sister here, Araceli, she looked at me with this kind of dazed look on her face and she sat on the grass and she looked me right in the eyes and she said, Nancy, if I could switch places with my sister, I would right now. I would right now. And you said something to me that I'll never forget. You said, I have nothing to lose. And she I has don't. everything to lose. She has everything to lose, yeah. No, but that, you know, and when you said that, it sunk in that you literally were begging God to take you me yeah. instead yeah and you had to be the advocate because Edgar his second language is Spanish so she had to translate and when you translate what the doctors are saying from English to Spanish there are some things that get lost in translation right right like with Edgar you would tell him something that the doctors would say and he'd be like what do you mean they're saying that like, what yeah, he mean? was not accepting it. He was not. And I said, it's, they have to um, say that the 80-20 80, percentage because they need to cover themselves for malpractice reasons. Right. It's right. not saying that she's not going to make it, but based on her condition right now, mm. that's what they think based on their medical knowledge. Exactly. The brain is a beast that we don't know of. <sighs> Medical science has not yet. Um, Say it again. Not to the Say point. It again. Medical but science doesn't know. No. no. So all we had was faith. Yes. Yes, babe. Yes. We had was faith, and God had to be the doctor for this one because yeah. if I would have lost her, I know. I don't know what I would have done. I know. I know. What I you don't know. Done. I know. I would have kept on doing, and I know that I would have taken, I would have done my best to raise those girls with my brother in law. Yeah, but you would have had I suicidal know. thoughts. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to. Um, she holds it all live together for some reason. Rosie just holds it all together for everyone. Like, she's just the go to person. Like, like, she's the girl you call when you have a bad day. And she's the girl you call when you need advice. They, both of them, the two sisters, they're equally the same way. But I had a different relationship with Araceli than I did with Rosie. Rosie was like a small little petal, little baby bud of a flower. And, and here's Araceli, this bright, big personality like me. And we, we are caregivers, right? So we want to... We always feel, and she's your younger sister, not to mention. She's your younger sister. That's all you yeah. had. That's all right. you have. And that is right. the reality. So they're like, you know, we, you may not, you know, she may not remember how to walk. And I told the doctor, I remember I told the neurologist, I said, well, I'm the one that taught her how to walk originally. I'll teach her again. That's so beautiful. That's I will so teach her again. Beautiful, and you were there day in and day out. And I remember the day you told me, Nancy, I just want to like wash her hair, and because she would just, like yeah. die if she knew how she looked. Like, because Rosie is a very private person. Like, she doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, if we all said like who saw her, we like if she knew, like she'd be pissed. So here you were trying to still appease her, Make even her though presentable. she didn't know, but you knew. Right. You knew yeah. what she wanted. Oh, yeah. And you were brushing the blood and the brush and the... Um, I mean, the, the blood in her hair uh, <sighs> was so bad that once they were able to wash her hair, the nurse told me that they had to wash her hair three times. Um, 
So bad. It was it was really bad. She was on fentanyl. She was had a machine breathing for her. She had a ventilator. She had a feeding tube. Um, once we got to week three, I told the neurologist, I said, we need to take that out. Yeah. She, your body starts to build scar tissue around the ventilator and it starts to build scar tissue around the feeding tube. Okay. I need her to be comfortable. Yeah. No matter where this goes, yeah. she needs to be comfortable. Yeah. And I want a trach to be placed in. Yeah. And I want a feeding tube in her stomach to be placed in. Amen, amen, amen. Um, they agreed, and they did it. Amen, amen. And she just seemed more comfortable at that point because her, um, with the feeding tube, they were feeding her the, you know, the liquid, the yeah. protein shaker or whatever it is that is, you know, for a normal person with a normal eating habit. Yeah. She, Rosie takes care of what she eats yeah. eats a lot of vegetables eats a lot of fish and chicken she really doesn't eat red meat she doesn't yeah. really eat carbs yeah. so her blood sugar was spiking right it was right. also spiking because of her injuries so right. they ended up starting um insulin because her sugar was high right. um and you know luckily they were a, they they figured it out and they decreased her to a you know a low sugar one um, and she was more comfortable with the trach. Um, well, and we also, just needed to wait time. You wanted her time. not to get comfortable in that position, right? You were like, no, yeah, yeah because you, she couldn't be turned. She yeah. couldn't be turned. She couldn't be touched. Once we could touch her, um, that was a blessing in itself. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes. I, I, I know that she, I knew that she could hear me. Yes. Um, so I was very cautious of what, what I spoke yes. and what was spoken by other people yes. in the room. Yes. Um, I made sure to tell her, you know, friends and family that would come and visit, please do not cry in the room. Yeah. Do not speak of anything negative. Yes. Because she can hear you. Yes. And you believed that all the way through. Oh, yeah. And I believed it all the way through, too, because I... When I saw Rosie, we still at that point couldn't touch her. And so basically my prayers was my hands over her body, like above her body. And I did say, I know you're comfortable, you know, and, and we all were telling her like, we know you're, you're happy because she got to see, you know, we'll talk, get into that in the second half of the podcast, but you knew she could hear you. You knew that she was responding. The doctors were like amazed because yeah. they were telling us her eyes had, had movement. Her eyes had reaction to right, the light. Right, right, right. So we uh, that that was uh, that was our gateway to know that she was still there. Amen. Amen. Because she was at that point, she wasn't moving. Um, obviously, she wasn't speaking and she wasn't opening her eyes. She wasn't medically sedated. She had the fentanyl for pain relief. Right, right. And but she was never sedated. She was never, I mean, she was never placed in a coma. No. Okay. Let's say that. Okay. You know, she, so she, so she was not in a coma. Okay. I, I, she was just, I misunderstood yeah. that, I think. Yeah, no, she was never in a coma. Um, just comfortable. And just comfortable, right. And, you know, once she got better, she did tell week, me that she could Which hear week me. did she get the trach out? Which week did she start talking? The third week she got the trach out. Praise God. The third week. Praise God. The third week. Um, I'm sorry, no, not the third week. No. The third, third week she got the ventilator out. She got the trach in. Right. And that's when she started to show signs try of improvement, to talk. right? She was of, like of improving. Right. And she was improving, yeah, at that point. And, and that was good. Um, she would react to stimuli to, you know, her feet, um, the brain, the way that the brain works, if I remember correctly. And I'm sorry if I get this wrong. No, no. The left controls the right. The yeah. right controls the left. Okay. Um, so they, you know, with MRIs that were being done frequently, they were trying to watch the fluid because we had to wait until the swelling went down. So the more the swelling went down, the more she would improve. Right. 
right, right. Um, and so it was a matter of just time. Time. Um, at this point, um, the girls, I told them they needed to go back home. Okay. Um, they were not happy about that. Because oh, they had been they had staying, been staying with, with me okay, yeah, for three ahead. weeks. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Um, I said, your dad needs you. Your dad misses you. Your dad can't sleep without yes. the three of you there. Yes. yes. And this is going to be the, the new normal. Yes. And I know it's not the same without your mom. Yes. But I did tell Noelia, the oldest, I said, you need to be the lady of the house now. Yes. Yes. Until your mom gets back home. Yes. Yep. And you need to make sure that everything's taken care of just like your mom would. Yes. And it's not that I don't want you here with me. I know. Baby. But we need to do what your mom would do. Yeah. Yeah. Because your mom is coming home. Yeah. And you even took him one day to Michael's to buy stuff to make him yes. signs. A board, Yeah because we needed to make sure to try to help Rosie once she was awake and they had to increase the medication. She was more awake than asleep. Yeah. Um, to have her know who her family was because yes. we didn't know at that point if she remembered. Right. And you were doing everything you could humanly possible to make sure that right. wasn't going to be the case. No. Not, not with your sister. Right. So... You know, the, the youngest one, uh, Camila, at that point. Keep in mind, the girls' birthdays are in July, too. Oh, that's right. So, that's uh, a my hard mom's month. birthday is in July as well. As so well. it's a really hard as month. Well. So, the, yes. you know, the accident happened on 4th of July. Camila's birthday is the 16th of July. Noelia's birthday is the 14th. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. I have to figure out a way to celebrate these girls birthdays and I don't know how I'm going to do it God but I cannot not do something yes 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 and you did I did and uh, the girls are really happy they had some joy in the sadness yes yes um, on um, mom's birthday you forced the dad did. to spend time with his girls that he'd never yeah uh, we went out to dinner yeah. and for the girls birthdays and they had they had a nice time um for rosie and and, and my mom's birthday um the grandkids and i went to the cemetery to take flowers and once rosie was awake we told her that we did that and that made her happy that we did yeah. um and the girls were really you know happy to be telling her that they were still able to celebrate their birthday yeah yeah um and mom so was still ha- mom was still hanging on mom was still hanging on and i said all these little moms are not going to wake up and just be mom no this is going to be a process girls and we have to be patient but your mom is coming home. Yes. That I do. I, you know, I, I have the faith that she will. And, you know, I, I, at that point I wanted to promise them, but it was so sketchy that I, I couldn't say promise. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course, because we were at the mercy of the doctors. Right. Uh, And, and they are amazing. I, I will say I, can you talk about from the everybody hospital, trauma hospital she was at? She was at Valley Medical, which is known for their trauma center. Right, one of the best. And I, I the nation, I kind of want to say the nation. They are. I mean, there's people from other states that go there. Yeah, yeah. And she, um, was, and she happened to have the accident right near that hospital. Yeah. Which another coincidence? And I happened to live less yes. than a mile from the hospital. Explain that you moved. A few so months, months before. So I moved here in April. The accident happened in July. And I was supposed to have actually moved to Connecticut. And I didn't. Yep. Yep. So do I believe things happen for a reason? Absolutely. Yes. Was I meant to be here? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't go for a reason. And this was the reason why I didn't go. And you thought it was something totally different. And I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, and and that's 
when we see miracles happening, like after we look back and go, God, that was a miracle. You know, when you look back and go, God, thank God that that happened that way. Cause, because as Araceli said, she, it's just her and her sister. So Connecticut, if you guys don't know from California to Connecticut, it's about a six hour flight away. So it's not like she could be immediately to get the girls and do the immediate stuff that needed to be done. So we thank God for that miracle that you didn't go. And No, yeah, I mean, there's you, you think a lot of the times when things don't work out for you, mm -hmm. you think, why me? Why yeah. didn't it? Yeah. And God has a different plan sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and and if things don't work out, it's for a reason. Amen. Amen. And we need to not be angry or bitter or upset that things don't work out sometimes how they how we want them to. Yes. Preach. And it has taken a lot of situations where I wish a door would have opened that should have been closed. Yes. To yes. learn that. Yes. Yes. Because we try to take control of things and, and honestly Everything is out of our control. The yes. only thing that is in our control is ourselves. Yes. yes. And how we show up. Yes. So yeah. I had the option of being a coward and not being strong enough to be there for my brother-in-law and for my nieces. Yeah. That's the truth. And I was not going to let that happen. No. It was a choice. Not on your I watch. I wasn't forced no. But not on my watch. No. I was not going to let that happen. No. And I was not going to leave my sister like a lot of siblings do. Like, oh, we don't think alike. Oh, we don't agree on the same parenting styles. Yes. Well, you know what? Well, that's too bad. I'm so sorry that you got in an accident and that she's in the hospital, but yeah. I'm not going to be a part of it. I was, that is all on the side. I don't, I didn't care. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, you know, that, you know, when prior to the accident if we disagreed i know that we still love each other yes. i know that i know that she loves me i know and she, and she knows that i love her yes. now she says to me she said to me i'm so sorry and i'm sorry for everything amen, amen. and i said you don't have to be sorry it is okay that, though, sis. i did i that. did because you know during the, the time she's of the accident. Tough. when She's she, a tough cookie, Rosie. She is a tough one. She, yeah. you know, she might come as really soft, no, but no, but she's, she's, she's uh, no, else. she's, she's tough. Yeah, she, is. <laughs> she is tough. She's tough. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, was hard on her sister. Very hard. She was hard on me. But it was out of she love, was hard like on me. you said. Yeah, she was, you know, and now, you know, hindsight 2020. Yeah. Now she's like, I just want you happy. And, you know, and uh, my brother-in-law said to me one day after a hospital visit, you know, she's not happy with the way you're living your life. And I said, living my life, I go to work, I come home, I walk my dog, yeah. I travel with my girlfriends, yeah. you know, like, I'm not doing anything bad. Like, what do you mean she's not happy with my life? Yeah. But I, I, I think that she didn't have the time to really know me. No. Or the situation. Because she had well, yeah. a lot on her plate, too. Right. And and here, you know, you guys disagree on so much that you knew your choices would piss her off. Let's I mean, to be honest, she she didn't want you with a specific person or she wanted you to be a specific way with a certain person and you weren't that way towards that person and she was right. hard on you. She was hard on right. you. And right. different parenting styles, different techniques. Oh my god, yeah. Different. Or, yeah, it. but you know, it, but it doesn't make her wrong and it doesn't make no, me wrong. No. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. You know, but, say it though, you know, because of this accident, which was deep sadness, yes. it has brought so many blessings. Amen. 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 Her daughters, Jesus. especially her oldest, has blossomed. You know, she was so codependent on my sister. Yes. And now she is the primary caretaker of my sister yes. and she's 18 yes. she's 18 she didn't go to college to take care of her mom I know. and before she was like I, I don't know if i can even see her yeah and you are her daughter her, now she's like she's protecting her mama like a lion and i love oh it. yeah i love it 
I love yeah. it. Even she though she didn't amazing. get to go, but she's learning life skills that you don't learn in college. Oh, no. College. You don't learn this. You don't no, learn you do this not learn this. In college. No, you do not. This is life experience right here. Oh, yeah. And you, mm -hmm. of all people, know about hard life lessons. Oh, my God, where, yeah. Where you've had to take some pretty big hits in life. And um, you're still standing. And you guys inspire um, me, you know. You inspire me because Thank you, you. you are... I, 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 there was not one time that Rosie looked up to open her eyes that you weren't going to not be there. Oh, no. I was there. Uh, oh, yeah. I was, I was not going to up. not be there. You showed up and you gave it all of you to the point where now you need to recharge a little bit because oh yeah we got the amazing news i'm depleted what date was it that she went home she went home uh my god september 15th september 15th and the accident happened july 4th yeah and with an 80 percent chance of not making it right and, and not only that she walked out of the hospital on her own from the fourth floor in her room at the rehab center praise to the car. God. Praise Jesus. Praise yeah. Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank uh -huh. you. Uh-huh. And she's not on no medication. Amen. Amen. She uh her wound on her hip healed. Amen. Um she is having physical therapy and speech therapy. Yes. Because she is having um, she's a little speech jumbled. issues. She's jumbled. She's a little jumbled. She's jibber jabbering it's, occasionally. It's okay. You know? It's but a, it's okay. I mean, it's I had a better. perfectly good conversation. I knew what she meant. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you really yeah. know her, you kind of know what she's trying to say, right? Yeah, and, and her facial expressions tell Right? Her, she, her like, she's a hoot. She likes yeah. to roll her eyes and all that stuff. So I... I um, and Rosie hasn't changed that part no, of her. No, she has not. She's still her. Yeah, she's still her. <laughs> tell, tell a little bit about when nurses would touch her. Oh, God. Oh, she no. So, so, <laughs> so once uh, she was in the rehab center, she had a male nurse. And it was time for her shower. <laughs> she was not going to have that. Let me tell you. <laughs> the minute the male nurse left the, the bathroom with the shower... Yeah. And the water running. She closed the door with and locked it. Oh, God bless her. God and bless her. Uh, she fell. Yeah. Deep down. Yeah. And ended up needing 15 stitches in her eyebrow. <laughs> so I'm like, really, girl? Lesson like, learned. really? Yeah. She so thought I'm she like, okay, then Rosie's there. Okay, she's she's good. Yeah, she thought she so, could do it still. Oh, my God. So, yeah, no, she was okay. You know, yeah, she has, you know, the, the surgeon, you know, when they stitched her up, they did a really good job. You can barely tell. But um, we were like, okay, no more male nurses for showers. Thank you. No, um, and Rosie. With the, like, did she need brain surgery? Was that what? She did not need brain surgery. Actually, no, I will back up. Okay. With the swelling of the brain, um, the I want to say maybe the third day. After the accident, they did have to place a probe okay. in her brain okay. That's what to was. measure, yeah, to measure the fluid. Okay. So, um, you know, my brother-in-law uh, was there at the hospital outside, right. but, you know, like I mentioned before, it was really hard for him. So I became the one in charge of her care right. um, and I signed off the consent and they put the place they put that probe in her brain yes. on the uh, left side frontal lobe uh -huh. um, to measure the fluid. And the first thing that I thought of when they did that was like, oh, man, they're going to shave her hair off. Uh. <laughs> she is going to lose her marbles. And um, actually, she's OK with that. I yeah. think she's just she's happy to be alive, yeah. you know. Yeah, she's yeah. okay with it because you know what? She's okay with it. <clears throat> Let's get to the um, the the thing why she's okay with it. And we laugh now. She's okay with it. But there was a, an experience that happened with Rosie that I believe, and I want to say, I don't want to speak for you, sis, but, but I believe that 
um, she did have a near-death experience. Oh yeah, she did. Um, this is what um, Faith ignited, because as Catholics, right, we're not supposed to, sometimes there's too many rules and it's just one God. And when you have a near-death experience, you see that there is just one Father, one God. And mm -hmm. Rosie um, came back speaking about, can you talk about a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, when she was able to talk more, right. um, she asked what she was doing there. Mm. And I said, well, what do you remember? And she says, bomb. And I said, no, it wasn't a bomb. And you were rear-ended. Mm -hmm. And then the car went horizontal and you were T-boned and you were ejected from the vehicle. And she said, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. She says, mom there. Mm -hmm. And I go, what do you mean mom was there? She goes, mom, mom there. Mm -hmm. And I said, mom was there. She says, yes. And I said, has mom left your side? And she said, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She later on... Uh, Beautiful. with her jibber jabber said to me that she um told that mom told her that it wasn't her time yeah that she knows that i know that you like it here mm -hmm. but you need to go back mm -hmm. and i said yes you needed to come back for your girls and she said for you too <sighs> And I said, um, yeah, because I would have, I would have died without her. I'm sorry. And, um. I think I would have too. I, I would like have made you, it without of course, her. But she would be a huge void in this world. Oh my God. Yeah. She's and she's so loved right. by so many people. She yes. is so loved. Yes. And that's what I told her. So many people love you. And so many people have been praying for you. Yeah. You know, you, do you realize you have over 40,000 people praying yes, for you? Yes, yes, sweetheart. And we thanked all those people that keep asking for Rosie and keep praying for Rosie because she's going to need prayers the rest of her life. We all do. Oh, yeah, she will. We all yeah. do. Um, it's not over. She's it's not over. It's slow, and I'm happy, but she's home, guys. She is home, yeah. And, and this is the and to me, like I've told you guys on this podcast before, when I went and saw her, she told me um, that she saw Dios. She kept saying Dios, uh -huh. Dios. Yeah. I, I talked to Dios. She says God, to yeah, God told her it was in her time. Yeah. That she, he knew that she was comfortable there, and, but she needed to go. And she pointed to a picture of your grandfather. My grandfather, yes. So at the rehab center, I tried to make it as homey as possible yeah. for her yeah. and not a hospital setting. Yes. So I told Noelle, yeah, why don't we go down to the store and get some fall decor and get her a nice cozy blanket yeah. and bring some pictures and frames instead of having no pictures and just all hospital stuff in the mm -hmm. room. And she said, that's a great idea. So I have, I had, because I gave it to her, I had a picture in my living room of my mom mm -hmm. holding my sister at her baptism. Mm -hmm. My grandfather standing next to my mom and myself in front of my grandparent, my grandfather and my mom. Mm -hmm. And I took that picture to her mm -hmm. at the rehab center and she lost it. Mm -hmm. He was there. Yes. Yes. He was there. Yeah. And he told me, it's not my time. Yes. Same thing. She said everything and I told her that. It's not her time. And my grandmother, too. Your grandmother and my grandmother. Too. Yeah. Grandmother my grandmother mom's too. mother. Yes. Your grandmother, grand, your grandparents. Your and parents. Mom. And my mom. And and um, other. And she said they're together. They're, yes. they're together. And my mom and my grandfather were inseparable. Amen. Amen. And Amen. she confirmed they, they're together. And um, I needed to come back. I said, Rosie, did you see heaven? And she said, yes. And she said, beautiful. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, amen, amen. It's so beautiful there, I bet. And she said, Dios told me Camila. I think she was trying to say, like, your little one is going to need uh -huh. you. 
Um, but for her to say, and you too. And you too. That. Um, I did not expect that. No. And, and if you guys can imagine, you know, the accident was near fatal. And um, we never thought we, I mean, we, I always was praying for the best, but I mean, at some point we, we didn't know. And, um, and seeing her and, and you seeing her as your sister who now, and I, I'm going to say it, is childlike and angelic. She it's is like, so pure. Yeah, what it, is it, it? It, it? Yeah, she is so pure now. It's so And weird. it's not that she wasn't pure before. Right. But now she is... It's, and that's what I told what her. I said, I said, you're born again. Yeah. And she said, yeah. She goes, yes, I, I am. Yes. yes. Her voice even changed. Yes. She just... She, she was always soft a soft person. person. Yes. But now... It, you know, she has a different laughter. Like she now means it when she laughed. And I told her that yesterday, you know, at her birthday dinner and she's so thankful for everything. And she's always saying, thank you. Thank you. And, and before she wasn't that way, she was more soft. You know, she wouldn't say thank you or she was hard. hard. Yeah. I mean, when I would call her, uh, prior to the accident, it was more like, what do you want? I'm busy, yeah. you know, type of uh, demeanor. And now, yeah. you know, her, 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 you know, her, um, gratitude for you. aunt in law that is there helping okay. right now. She said to me yesterday at dinner, she said, she is so happy when you call her. Oh my God. She lights up when you call her, or FaceTime her. Oh my God. And, 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 and Noelia says, I have been craving this from her. Like, what am I doing wrong? Yes. I just want my, I felt like I had a sister, but didn't have a sister. Yes. And now I have a sister. You're, she's back and better. I mean, she may be broken, but God, but it's okay. God put her back together and, and let her come back. And come back. And, and it's okay. And guess what, guys? There is a heaven. I, I, I say this over and over. Oh, there is. But she looks like she has been touched by an angel. She, yeah. She looks her complexion, like her just, her, she glows. Yeah, her oh, eyes yeah. glow. Her eyes glow, uh, yeah. Uh, even her face glows. It's this clean face, clean. She just has this, like... Uh, Pureness. Yes. Yeah. It's incredible to see. It's incredible to witness. And aren't we so blessed that that we get to see it and and Uh watch it happen. Uh And you more than ever, because your faith has been tried a time or two. We all Oh my God, has it been? Yeah. You know, um you have suffered uh, your fair share too that a lot of people not even your sister knew no, what you were holding no. in your heart yeah and um, not a lot of people know what you hold in your heart because you keep yourself very guarded and tight yeah and, um, well you know a lot of the times why I do it is because it's like okay if I have to be strong for them then you know I have to, I have to be strong so, you know, if I break down, I break down in private. Yes. And that's what I used to do yes. um, when the accident happened yes. because, of course, I was around the girls, you know. Right. And I had them living with me, so I would go outside and cry. Yes. I would talk to God and, you know, let your will be. Yes. Amen. Amen. And yes. when we leave it to God, spirit, whomever you believe in, yes. you know, because it, when it comes down to it, it's love. It's just love. It's just love. It's just love. So who cares what or who, you know, we know it's God, but if you guys believe in a higher don't, power, yeah. Okay and then it's spirit or whatever. Yes. I, you know, it's, it's, it, it's all love. It's, all it's your love. will and it's not mine. But when you let it go, you have to let it go. Yeah. You can't let it go to your higher power. And still hold on to it. Amen. 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 Prayers you up. You have to let it go. Prayers up, blessings down. 
I, I, I firmly believe in that. Prayers up, blessings down. If, if, if you are asking God to change other people for you, that's never going to happen. No, you have to change yourself and how you handle things. And what do we always say? Bless them, change me. Right. You know, and it works a million times a day. It works sometimes. Because oh, God, yeah, it does. I encountered with people who um, they could care less what we've seen and heard. And and they just are uh, people who don't want to believe that there's a God. Um, and... And what would you say to someone who was, might be listening who um, doesn't believe that God does miracles like this? They need to re listen to this podcast. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. you. Know? Um, Good answer. They have to sis. really, they, 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 yeah, you're welcome. They have, you know, I, I, I think that there comes a time in your life. Yeah. After you suffer so yes. much tragedy and so much sadness, yes. you your only option is to let go. Yeah, and rebirth. And I, myself, uh, I was, quote unquote, a control freak. You know, I would think this is how my life has to be. It has to play out this way. And if it didn't, people. it was fight or flight. A lot of people. Um and, you know, what What are people going to think? And I have to abide by these, you know, society rules or yes, what have you. Yes. Now I don't care. Yes, amen. Because amen. I know who I am. Yes. So you have to know yourself, right? Yes. And you, need, you, you have to be right with yourself in order to be right with others. Right. And I'm not saying right as in correct. I'm right. saying right as in healthy with healthy yourself. With you have yourself. to love. The love starts within yourself. Because if you really don't love you... How can you truly love somebody else and be there present for somebody else if you're not there for yourself? You can't. Preach, you can't pour from an empty cup. Preach, so what's in the cup is for me. What's out of the cup is for you. Amen. 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 And, and you have always such words of wisdom. And that's not, you know, just because she reads books or watch podcasts, her friend will say, no. oh, there's no yeah. podcast in the world that can teach you that. It's true. It's, it's self-reflection. It's, it's experience. It's self-reflection. Self uh, self but you know, sometimes um, self-reflection takes isolation. Yeah, it really does. And, right. you know, Rosie used to tell me, you know, it's not healthy for you to, to isolate. And I said, I'm not isolating. I'm just working on me. Sometimes you need and, to that time. And it's okay. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's okay to be by yourself. Yes. You know, it's not a bad thing. Yes. Um, I, I mean, there's, there's those sad moments when you're in isolation, you yeah. know, when you have nobody around. Luckily I have my dog. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, he saved me. I think I didn't yeah, save him. Too. He chose me. Yeah, he chose me, and and um, I think he came into my life without a reason. Yeah, well, I mean, for a reason. I didn't wasn't even thinking about getting a dog. I just went to look. Um, that's but that's God. for a different story. Right there, that's God. Yeah, that was not me. That was not me wanting a dog. Trust me, guys. I mean, there's Trust so me. many things uh, Araceli and I could like say where we know that there's been intervention from above. Oh, intervention. Oh my God, yeah where we're like you won't believe like she'll message me you won't believe what i because like butterfly dragonfly that represents mom her mom their mom and nature things of nature because araceli um she's the type of person like me like um ocean nature um when we see I mean, God's work in front it, of us because we uh, i still get amazed by the colors of trees sometimes i'm just like wow Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'll t I, and I haven't even told you this story, actually. So um, on mom's birthday, when the girls and I actually, no, I, I take that back. Um, when Rosie got out of the hospital, the first thing she wanted to go do was to take mom flowers to the cemetery. So we went to go have lunch and TMI, but I was, you know, went to the restroom and I said out loud, mom. We're on our way to go see you. So please, if you are around, show yourself with a bluebird. Oh my God. 
when we got to the cemetery, put the flowers in her plot, uh, we decided to take a little walk to give my sister, you know, her little exercise. And I said, Noelia, what's in that tree? Is that bug blue? And she says, Nina, I can't tell. And I said, can you zoom in and take a picture, but don't get too close because I don't want to scare it away. Yeah. It was a bluebird. So Hi, Ms. Coco. there's signs. Yeah. There's signs all over the place. Your mom is very, you think there are Sally's vocal? Miss Coco. Oh, my mother, she she is fast. Talk a little bit about your mom and, and mm. how she, you um, know, what she came she up passed. With, uh, how she she, came up. she she is uh she's something else. She was diagnosed she was. with uh, pancreatic cancer in uh, Mother's Day weekend of 2018, mm. Mm. and that day I remember it clearly. Um, stage four pancreatic cancer mm. it was terminal mm. she had cancer in her brain and she had cancer in her pancreas and we had to choose where we wanted to treat and it not to heal it but to give her more time mm. so um we decided to do chemo and radiation mm. and she was adamant on not passing away before noelia graduated junior high would be her first granddaughter yeah or, and yeah, the granddaughter. she actually passed away four weeks after the graduation mm. but um prior to my mom's passing away um she wouldn't say passing away or i'm dying she said when i go on vacation yeah. and that was her word right. her vacation right. so she, you know our midnight talks yeah. um planning her funeral and things like that she would say to me do you want to come with me oh that's right you can't go it's not really a vacation and I said it's okay mom and this is uh, where she says well do you know how things work out over there when you go on vacation yeah. and I said I don't know mom yeah. you'll figure it out and the first thing I will say that Nancy told me, but the first time I talked to Nancy, Nancy told me, your mom wants you to know that she figured it out. I will never forget that. That was the first thing you told me. And there's no way, no way, if there was not a higher power telling you to tell me that because it was a midnight conversation and my mom and I were the only ones in the room. Well, that was the first thing I heard her say is I, I figured it out. I got I it. found my way. I made it. I made it. Yeah. And she showed Rosie what because Rosie was miss she would say to me Nancy, Oh, she missed my mom would, so much. She would say to me Nancy like I just want like one more talk with her just one more i have so many i just questions. need to see her yeah, yeah. Like, i i i have so many questions i just need to see her like i i go to church i pray i don't know what else to do like to feel her to see her but now yeah she, now she does and this is what i told rosie on that note i did tell her i go you know maybe you needed this yeah. this accident had to happen in order to, for you to have that moment with mom and our grandparents one more time. Yes. And as messed up as that may sound, yes. Yes. God had her. Yes. Amen. Amen. Preach. And I told, I told Rosie this, this accident needed to happen. And I said it not knowing how she would react to this. Right. She could, she could have been like, are you crazy? Rosie would, would be like, you know what? Get out of here. You wish that on me? Yeah. Right. She said yes. Mm. I know. Amen. Amen. She's an angel. She's pure as an angel, if you guys can. She is so pure now. And her laugh, and like I told her that last night, I said, I love to hear, hear you laugh. It's so real. Yeah, now it's different, right? You get to hear Rosie. It is so. Laugh. 
it's just oh my god it 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 brings me so the joy in my heart when i hear her even when i hear when i hear her talk maybe you remember when she was a kid that that's how she sounded in that possibly comfort it is so just it, it it fills me up And it's like so many things every day. Like today was her birthday and I texted her knowing that it wasn't going to be like a normal birthday, but I I texted her and I was like, I'm going to call her, but I called, she didn't answer. So I figured maybe she was napping or something. So I texted her daughter and I said, Hey, can you tell your mom that I love her and happy birthday? And do you guys know, like, When you think somebody's going to die and then you see their number pop up on your phone on a, like, calling you back, like, to talk to you, like, what, like, what is going on? Like, how could people not have faith or belief that there's something that's causing these things to happen? And it's... No, and, and, and I have so many stories to, on that. Yeah. Would you like to share you one know? more? Uh, my mom's passing. Right. Go ahead with that one. Yes. You know, my mom passed on July 3rd. Yeah. yeah. Which happens to be the day after Rosie had the accident or the day before. Right. So that was an indicator back then that on July sometime, you guys are going to suffer something big. Right, something. Yeah. So Rosie, on the day of the accident, was somber because of mom's passing, four-year anniversary, the day before. Right. So when mom passed away, of course, you know, they come to pick up her body at home because she passed away at home. And um, I... I had told my mom, give me a sign. Give me a sign you're here. Like, give me a sign you're okay. So when I called for them to come and pick up her body, I I remember they said, well, you know, tomorrow's 4th of July. So um, I said, okay, well, okay. Just, I need the next date. What is the next date you're able to hold a funeral? My mom didn't want to hold on to it. She wanted everything done in one day because of the grandkids. She doesn't want to make them hurt more than what they need, you know, what they're hurting. Yes. And they said July 11th, and that is my mom's birthday. Oh, my gosh. So we had mom's funeral services and burial on her actual birthday. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that something? And I said, okay, she's here. That's my sign. That's your sign. Because it was not. I, I didn't. I didn't ask for July 11th. Right. You never did. No. I never did. I just said whatever date. Like I'll just roll with it. And I said, okay, mom, I hear you. She's okay. She arrived. She made. She's at her next. Yeah, she made it. She's at her next. You know, destination. So is this a bus ride? Where we're at now? Absolutely. Yeah. What are we gonna do with this? What are you going to do while you're on the bus? What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Yesterday doesn't matter, guys. No. What matters right now? Exactly. And it's time right now. Tomorrow doesn't matter. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And trust me, you know, I... I, You suffer a lot. from anxiety. Yes. You know, and and until you realize that, you're going to suffer. Everything will crumble until you accept... That you, you have to accept the good and the bad, yeah. and you have to let go. Yeah, you have to let go. And like Araceli was saying, let go without conditions. Let go with, con- don't put conditions on letting something go. Well, if you do this, if she does this, I'll do this. No, no, it can't be no. that way. It can't. You you can't way. love with conditions either. No. If you love, you have to love purely. Doesn't matter if that person loves you back or not. It doesn't matter if that person calls you back or not. If you want to call somebody, call. Yep. You might not get that chance tomorrow. That's right. That's right. If you have to forgive, you forgive for you, not for the other person. The other person may never forgive you. Exactly. And that's their issue. That's their issue, not yours. 
you have to let your ego and your pride and all that aside. Now, we know you have to. We know that uh, Rosie's going to probably listen to this podcast. Cause oh, yeah, she I'll, will. I'll send it to Noelia. But, I love you, sissy. But, yeah, but I was going <laughs> to say, what would you say to the Carrillo family? Each one, um, if you could go by and, and end with Rosie. You start with maybe Edgar. Oh, my God. Edgar. Cuñado. Yes. Which is brother Yo quiero un montón a mi cuñado. He is amazing. Yeah. He has been the rock that my sister and her family needs. Yes. He has blossomed as a man. Yes. Not that he wasn't before. No. But now even more. Yes. Different. He he's so different. He's so soft and he lets you know, you know, the affection with even with the girls and he's more um, present. Yes. He doesn't take advantage of time anymore. Yes. They needed and so much. they needed that of him. And I am so proud to call him my brother-in-law. I, I, I don't know what I would have done without him. Even though he might think, like, he doesn't know what he would do without me, I don't know what I would have done without him. Amen. It's very true, guys. I, I witnessed one day firsthand where they were a team. Like, okay, you got the morning, I got the afternoon. Who's going to get the evening? Who's going? Who's going to do this? Are you, it was between her and Edgar. That was it. There was no outside. There's nobody else. There was, no. It was just you and your brother-in-law. And yeah. you guys were forced to... Be in this situation and to become a bridge, yeah. Como tu comportaste is the way he did, right? So you, what yeah. you gave, he gave you back, and he was so yeah. scared. And I believe with all my heart that if he could just tell you everything, he would say, you know, that if it wasn't for you, like I don't know that he would be like changed. Uh, yeah, you know. You forced yeah. him to make some really hard decisions. And it mm -hmm. was all to make him an incredible... Not that he wasn't before. No, yeah. And, you know, I gave them all tough love. Yeah. yeah. The girls and him. Yeah, you are good for that. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. I give tough love. My sister yeah. doesn't give tough love, yeah. you know? So um, I had to lay it down, you know? Noelia, my God, darling. Yes. You... She is so different now. She was so closed off, even with me. She wouldn't speak to me. She wouldn't um, talk to me. Right. For other reasons, maybe we can do another podcast. Yeah, but um, she she has blossomed into a young lady. Oh my god, so beautiful! You know, she takes care of her mother. She's there for her dad. She takes care of whatever her mom needs help with. She's there at every therapy session. What about occupational her, her little sister? Camila, my goodness, no, that no, little girl. No, no, Noelia is Camila's gu guardian right now, pretty much. Oh my god, yeah, pretty much. She, you know, even yet last night at dinner, um, no, Camila was cleaning out her closet uh -huh. and she's Camila, you can't put that clothes in the garbage. Uh -huh. You know, mom used to take it to a donation center yes. and that's what we need to do yes. dad god. are you going to take her to the donation center to give out the clothes because Please she's god. she can't throw that away oh my god and you know she has become the mother yes. to some degree yes and that's okay she's enjoying it because and she and, and she is to a, a live mom every day yeah every day i mean they're the, the, you know rosie and, and noelia are cooking together now oh my god she's um rosie yeah, she's teaching. No, actually, it's the other way around. Oh, good. Rosie is guiding Noelia. And she's doing um, it. And she's doing it. She refuses to get help with cleaning the Amen. house. Amen. Rosie helps her. Okay. Um, That's no, Rosie fighting. is. She's fighting. She's fighting for her family. Yeah. yeah. And she's fighting for her, her place, you know, in her home, yeah. you know. And, and Noelia is. At this Whatever point. way it is, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and like I tell Noelia, if she wants to do it, let her do it. Yes. Just be there. Yes. And she but you need to let your mom be your mom. Yeah. Remember, she's your mother. Yes. Yes. And for her, that her cross is so heavy, too. We ask, Lord, that Noelia feel uh, your strength, God, that she carries so much on her shoulders and, and helping her mom. It's not easy to help a little sister, help her mom, help her dad. She lives there. She's there 24 hours a day. Uh-huh. And uh, she deserves... She even rearranged her, her work schedule. She deserves a spot in this podcast. She deserves yeah, she to be mentioned. And Noelia, you're an amazing girl. I don't know you. Um, I met she is you. amazing. But from what I can tell... Um, and what I know, you're an amazing kid, and keep up the great work, sweetheart. And little Camilla, yeah. you know, just follow suit, baby girl. Just yeah. Follow suit. What mom would want, right? What right. Mom would want from her. Right, and that's what I tell the girls. You know, she, you guys are um, her pedestals right now. And I'm always going to be here, you know, because I, it was hard for me to step away. Yes. Yes. Um, you had to rearrange your her. place and your schedule and your I life. did. I, I rearranged everything. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm adjusting to, to my new normal. Well, and is, nobody knows that you didn't get paid your time no. off to be with your sister. You, you, no. you lost hours of work but you didn't care because you yeah, know it didn't matter it didn't matter do what you got to do then but i'm here with money sister. money comes and goes but i have one sister that's right that's right. and nobody's gonna take that from me no nobody and when before mom passed away mom was really worried about the family and i promised my mom that I would take care of everybody, that everybody would be okay. Yes. And I was not going to let my mom down. No. No. You haven't. You haven't, my sister. You haven't. You haven't. And Rosie, this is dedicated to you. This podcast is dedicated to you. This entire faith ignited because she reignited my faith in a way that I can't explain it. I watched this yeah. miracle happen right before yeah. my eyes and I'm different now too. And we um, we are um, very close friends. We're family. We're not even friends. Yeah, we are. We're Ohana. We're, we're, we're chosen family, which yeah, is even deeper. Even deeper. <laughs> and I love this girl so much. I, um, her and I took a year off, too, because, listen, we didn't always get along the best either. No, we clashed. We we're clashed. too much alike. We all clashed, too much alike. That's why we all like Rosie, because she brings peace. It's me and her, the hurricanes. And I wanted to say, don't now corrupt your sister with our evil ways. <laughs> But what oh, I wanted man. to say is I appreciate you, my sister, for doing this with I me tonight. You. I so felt it was so necessary. And I also would like to invite you to come back to like of talk course. about because I'm going to do a series on marriage. Oh, and if my you goodness. Could be a do guest, I know about that? Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. could be a guest speaker on one of those um episodes of course and and i love you my sister and i, I love you too um, i uh I, know. I wouldn't be who i am without your tough love you know what namaste means? you are a huge part you know thank <laughs> you my sister you know what namaste means is what i learned recently um, yes i do i see god in you um, i see god you. in you namaste i see god in you my sister I Thank see you. God in you. Thank you. And I'm here for the rest of our lives. Oh, yeah. We We're are like bonded Luke. for life. 
and, and yes, I love you, and she gets up I at 4 o'clock every morning, guys. Yes, so she's yes, guys. Here late night. <laughs> um, we're going to say goodnight to Araceli. Thank you, my sweets. You're so welcome. And uh, you just hang tight real quick. Let me just say goodbye, and uh, I'll sure be right thing. Okay. okay. Thank you, guys, for listening to... I want to say a huge thank you to my guest tonight, Araceli. Reyes, uh, Serato, and on my phone early. early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David, that's a whole nother thing, but uh, we love you and we thank you for being here tonight. Listen, guys, thank you for hanging in with us. Thank you if you're late night, if you're going to bed now. I hope you drifted off to sleep and maybe you'll catch it um, on the replay on Palma One Radio on Sunday night. Or Monday afternoon, it is posted on my YouTube channel, so you can always listen to it there. And with that, I wish you all a good night. God bless. Remember that miracles do happen, and they're happening around you right now. Amen. God bless y'all. See you next week. Bye-bye. Blessings. Blessings.